move into that. I hope you have message notes. If you don't, raise your hand. We wanna serve you message notes right now. Those of you that are uh, that snuck in the room without getting them, look at your neighbor. If they don't have message notes, raise your hand for them. Now I see hands going up. People need message notes, so grab those if you would. And uh, we're in a series called Bouts with Doubts. How many were here last weekend? Let me, let me see your hands. Uh, Okay, so the rest of y'all were not here last weekend. Right, let's try it one more time. How many of you were here last weekend? A few more hands go up because it takes three times before people actually will comply. All right, so if you were not, I encourage you to please log on to our app or the website and watch that message last week. We talked out of Daniel 1 and we discussed a lot of where we are today in culture in a message that we call Cultural, Doubt, cultural Doubts and uh, where we are really in this agenda that the enemy, I believe, has for this nation and for those of us that are of the faith. And uh, so if you missed it, please log on and watch that. This series is gonna go several more weeks and uh, we're gonna cover uh, many other things because you've actually asked for it. These are, this is a series based off of questions that you've asked about doubts and certain doubts and having doubts. Today, I want to speak to you and I've got a lot of ammunition just this morning when church folks let you down. As I said, I have no idea what's going on anymore around here. We just, uh, I apologize, y'all. Um, anyway, so as, as I was saying, when church folks let you down, that was like perfectly on tune, wasn't it? How many of you have ever been let down by people? Just keep your hands up. I wanna see the ones that did not have, oh, so now the hands go up. See, y'all, why can't y'all just do it the first time? Why don't you just, again, story of our culture. You've been let down, you've been hurt, you know, and, and you hear people talk about the church today, and there's not a lot of confidence anymore when it comes to church in America. There's really not. Can we just, can we just speak about the elephant in the room? A lot of people don't do what we're doing. The people 10 years ago that did what we're doing now don't do what we're doing now as much, which is gather. And there's reasons for that. Now, not all of those reasons are validated or substantiated, but many of them are. And I wanna talk about that today because the biggest complaint that folks make about ch church today, and I wanna, I wanna show you some of this, and if you concur, I want you just to say amen. First one is church is just full of a bunch of hypocrites. Okay? Why else do people, complaints people make about the church? Well, it's full of a bunch of hypocrites. They're narrow-minded. People are narrow-minded. Judgmental. Anybody know any judgmental people? Do you know judgmental people in the church? Are you one? <laughs> At the very end of this message, we will answer that. People claim one thing, but yet they live another. How many know that to be true? They claim to do this, they claim to have that, or whatever. You know, maybe you've got a classmate. Those of you that are in school, we're gonna honor graduates next week, as it was said earlier. Um, you know, they see you see on their Instagram or on their Snapchat or whatever, you know, there's scripture verses and just how much they love Jesus and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. But yet when you look at their life, it doesn't look anything like what they post. It's different. Everybody says it's different. Maybe you have a Christian boss who says that they're all about Christ, they go to church, but yet they treat their employees really badly. Maybe it's the lady at church or the guy at church, but usually it's a lady. Lady at church loves Jesus, but yet always gossiping. Run into her at Ramey's or Walmart, and it's like, she knows every, she knows more than Google. <laughs> Does anybody know anybody like that? Raise your hand. I'm just checking the pulse of who's in the room. Maybe there's a dad that shames his daughter about her dress, but yet has a porn problem. By the way, our gathering times are PG-13. We have an amazing children's ministry and see kids. We really encourage you to capitalize on that. Maybe a pastor you looked up to and admired lived a double life and things started to come out that weren't true. It's confusing. Tragically, most people today, when you talk about the church and the current state of the church, it's validated because there's a lot of scandals. You see and you hear that. 
I'm so thankful Tony and I and Ethan have been on the coast since the end of 2004. Um, we're still here, you know, and, and it's, it's been a journey, obviously, to say the least. We've gone through Katrina with you on the coast and, you know, doesn't mean we haven't made mistakes, but we've always tried to be people and to lead the church with integrity. Doesn't mean that everything's always perfect because people are not perfect. But you also see in the church, you see abuse. You see that, maybe you see corruption, judgment, like we talked about a few minutes ago, and even hate. How many know what I'm talking about? You see this today. And last week we talked about Jesus, how he came full of grace and truth. And if Jesus came full of grace and truth, why then do we see so much hate? If it's about Jesus and he was about grace and truth, why does the church look this way? Why, why is it? I'm gonna tell you today, I hope you're ready. Brendan Manning said this, I want you to look at this. He says, the greatest, single greatest cause of atheism, atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips, then walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. So maybe you're hurt, maybe you're confused, maybe you're disillusioned by Christians who didn't uphold their expectations that you had. You're not alone, first of all. And I wanna say this, Jesus had some of the most harshest words in his ministry for what's called hypocrites. And we're gonna talk about that today. Look at Matthew 23. Scripture says this, what sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites. I notice how he didn't kind of like warm up to it. He just called it what it was. He says, for you're like whitewashed tombs, beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead man's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like righteous people, but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. 17 times in the scripture, hypocrisy is used. 17 times. You know what's interesting about it? Every single one was by Jesus. Every single time hypocrite was used or referred to, Jesus is the one that said it. And hypocrite actually is from a Greek play acting is where the original root was. And so it was where you'd put on a mask and you would pretend and it was these Greek stage actors where one wears a mask and they play different parts. And, and so that's where this whole term came from. And Jesus is the first person to ever use hypocrite outside of the theater context. Don't you think about that. If hypocrite meant in the Greek culture, you put on a mask to look a certain way, but yet that's not really what you were because you're masquerading or you're pretending. And that was kind of norm for the theater. But Jesus he brought that in and he said, look, he said, you're, you're just like these folks in the theater that are just pretending, that are just acting. He was calling out their show, not necessarily their sin. These people that he's talking to, you give to be seen. You fast to impress people, praying to be heard, pretending to be generous, taking advantage of the poor. That's what he was talking about. He didn't say, woe to you who cuss, Woe to you who watch bad shows. Woe to you who watch shows on Netflix you shouldn't watch. Woe to you. He says, no, woe to you who pretend one thing and do another. I wonder if there's anybody listening today to this message because so many Christians today, we get it wrong. Y'all give a hand for the baptism team and the baptism. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't prepare for enough seats for them to come back in, but thank y'all. We love you guys. Cannot wait to celebrate with you guys here at the end of this message. Verse 33, I want you to see this in Matthew 23, 33. It says, you snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? So let me talk real seriously for just a moment. This message today is not one that is very popular amongst the populace because messages today, sermons today are not popular when you're calling out truth. When you discuss truth, because here's the thing, we, we, get, we have this masquerade that we're all guilty of in some degree or capacity. We all are hypocritical in some way. Can I get an amen from somebody? 
You say, I ain't going to that church because it's full of hypocrites. There's always room for one more. Always. <laughs> so what I'm about to speak to you about, I want you to allow the Spirit of God to speak to you and not to think about the people that you're thinking about in this room or those that you wish were here listening to this message because that's what we've done. We've, man, they needed to hear this and they may have, but the problem is is that you need to get the two by four out of your eye before you call the sawdust out of theirs because the church doesn't look much different than the culture that we're trying to reach, unfortunately. And we've gotten into this whole celebrityism and, and play acting and theatrics and production that we've honestly gotten away from the genuine truth of the word of God. And church, I'm telling you, we've gotta get back to the blueprints. We gotta get back to the heart that Jesus has for his bride. And if you're in Christ, you are his bride. Male or female, you are his bride. Everybody say amen to that. So let's talk about this. Point number one, I want you to write this down. Why, are so, why do so many people get it wrong? Why? Why do so many people get it wrong? Why, why does the church get it wrong? Because here's what we wanna think about. We wanna think about the institution of the church. Let's talk about the church being the individuals because we are the church, right? We don't go to church, we are the church. So write this down. Some people who claim Christ aren't really Christian. It's a feel-good message, isn't it? Titus 1.16 says, they claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They say something. See, here, here's, here's what I love about messages like this. And first of all, somebody said, do you get nervous about this? No, I love it. I absolutely, because I love confrontation. I love confrontation because I love truth. Even if it hurts, I want it. I need truth in my life. And there's people in my life that have access to tell me the truth, even if it's not, they're not impressed with me. They're friends. They're not allowed to come to this church. Why? Because I don't want to be their pastor. I want them to be my friend. Well, that's, that's weird. Maybe so, but when you're a senior pastor, you'll understand. I want people that is not impressed with me as their pastor that are friends that can see the blind spots that maybe others can't, that know me deep, with, that know me more than just being on this stage or hanging out and talking. You get my point, right? So this scripture says, they claim to know God, but by their actions, everybody say actions. By their actions, they, they deny him. So how many, how many do we know in the church today that we profess, oh, I love Jesus, yes, king of glory, but yet I live a life totally different than the way I am when I'm at church gathering, or I profess, but I don't. Many, unfortunately, we think that going to church makes us a Christian, but it doesn't. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Following Jesus makes you a Christian. Believing in God doesn't make you a Christian. Following Jesus makes you a Christian. The demons even believe, the devil believes everybody, right? Carrying a Bible around doesn't make you a Christian. Following Jesus makes you a Christian. It's not about your denomination. It's not about what you drive or where you live. It's about have you got a relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you made him your Lord, your savior, your king? Have you called on him and repented of your sin? This is, you know, it's not about how great we are, amen. No, it's how great he is. And when we look at how great he is, he makes us more every day into the image of who he is. It's a process. Every day we should be being transformed more and more into his image. Number two, some are Christians, but many not, but not mature. And this is the one I'm gonna spend the most time on. And this is not a very lengthy message. Hebrews 5, 13 through 14 says, for someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. There's a lot of this too today. We get excited, ambitions, and we just, man, oh, this is so great, what a great, but, but we're not mature. I remember when I was in the 10th grade many years ago now, um, I remember my first youth group lock-in. And it was at the Methodist Church in town. And um, we were, y'all remember the movie, The Fugitive with Harrison Ford? It had like just come out. So y'all can do the math and figure out what year that was. And so 
we were watching The Fugitive. And of course, you know, the pastor and the people that were there, I guess there were other people there. I don't know, because we were just like in the lobby of the fellowship hall. And, and, and I learned more about sex that night. I told y'all it was PG-13. Don't get mad or offended. You need to be teaching your kids anyway. I was blown away by all I seen and heard. So it was like, huh, I like church. <laughs> Herein is why we will never do lock-in at Collective Church. You say, well, what's, what's the do? We have, I'll come back to that in a minute. <laughs> Number three, some are Christians and maturing and still mess up. This doesn't make them hell-bound hypocrites, by the way. They love Jesus, but they might tell a little lie, a little fib. They love Jesus, but they might be a little mean. No matter how long we follow Jesus, we're vulnerable to sin because all of us have fallen short. When we fall short, though, look at this, we blame our circumstances. Man, I messed up. This is the reason why. I got some justifications. I got a card I can show you. I'm gonna justify. But here's the thing. When someone else falls short, we blame their character. So for me, it's my circumstances. And for you, it's your character. That's just who you are. You will always be a deadbeat. You'll always be a scoundrel. You'll always, y'all, y'all get my point, right? See, when we sin, God's not shocked. You know why? Because he knows. When I do something to let you down, even as your pastor, and I will, by the way, because I'm a little sarcastic sometimes. I might say something a little inappropriate or offend you. I won't live up to your expectation or we may disagree. Here's the thing. We all mess up. We all have shortcomings. Many of us, we come to church and we look all churchy with our nice outfit on and our makeup and we filter our pictures on Instagram because our pictures, our selfies are never the reality. We filter it so we look like there's no blemishes and it's perfect and the eyelashes are perfect and the eyebrows are great and the hair is just perfect and the sun is just shining in the perfect direction and I'm sparkling and there's just, it's just my makeup is perfect. We live in a world today that nothing is real. We pretend, we, we, there's nothing that is genuine anymore, but we all make mistakes and we're gonna let each other down. Even pastors are gonna let people down. Paul and Barnabas in Acts 13, I want you to see this. It says, the word of the Lord spread through the whole region. I want you to see the scripture. But the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. Now, Paul and Barnabas, what did they do when they, these, they were preaching and teaching the message of the cross and of Jesus? Man, this happened, they said, I quit church, I'm done. Y'all just a bunch of hypocrites, I ain't ever going back. I'm done. They could have and would have had they been focused on the offense, but they weren't. The church didn't let them down. The church didn't betray them. The church didn't hurt them. It wasn't the whole church, it was a few. The logic is, I can't go to church, people will hurt me. Well, do you stop eating because you get bad service at a restaurant? Do you stop going to restaurants because they didn't fill your tea glass up when you wanted them to at this one? Maybe it took 15 minutes to get that burger and the fries weren't good. Are you never eating again? I hope you're hearing the rationale here. Paul and Barnabas, they decided, you know what? I'm not gonna let sins of people keep me from the goodness of God. 1351, it says, so they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. What did they do? What do we have to do? Taylor Swift said it best. Shake it off. <laughs> Just shake it off. Because <laughs> people are gonna let you down. But God's not not the church as a whole. And I've heard this so many times. Well, my kid had a bad experience and see kids. I ain't never going back to that church. Well, your kid is a terrorist. <laughs> we, <laughs> I 
I might be dividing the church more than growing it. <laughs> this has happened time and time again, man. I, I've, I've got notes here. Someone gets mad at a parent checking the kid in or an usher because an usher is trying to seat you in our high attendance days. And I have watched from over here, I have watched people, I'm sitting where I want to. I'm gonna be an usher next time for at the movies. You gonna sit where I put you. <laughs> Why? Because we're making room for more people. It ain't all about you. But in our mindset, that's what life is. It's all about us. And if something lets us down or we don't have expectations met, when well, I ain't going by it. That's an easy excuse to make. You go to Walmart, and I know you get let down there just by pulling in the parking lot. Right? But why is it the church we do it differently? Because it's easy. Because it's easy for us to justify not going, sitting at home, hanging out. I don't like people. We don't make you talk to anybody. Notice we said sit down. Nobody's gonna talk. And if they do talk to you and you sit down, let me know. Please, personally, let me know. We'll fix that. We have people. All of our trustees like, yeah, that $50 is adding up every time. I'm loving it. <laughs> People get upset because we don't play a certain type song they requested yesterday. The kids get in a fight with another kid and see kids leave the church. It's not easy. This is not easy, guys. But people are people wherever you go. There's gonna be sermons you don't like, but those may be the sermons you need to hear the most. There's gonna be scripture text that's really gonna hit you between the eyes. And instead of being offended and saying, well, why don't you just say, hmm, I wonder what that had to do with me. Is there something that maybe the spirit of God's trying to show me? Because there may be, you know, there's gonna be times to where there needs to be conversations. There needs to be, hey, because if we're all just doing whatever the heck we wanna do, then that creates disorder and chaos. Kind of like Billy going on for 10 minutes on the stage. It won't happen again. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed it. You can talk to him out there anytime you want to. <laughs> I gave him clear instructions. You got five minutes. When he hit 12 minutes, I'm like, he is done. <laughs> See, Kalishan, if you'd have just said yes last week, that would not have happened. <laughs> it's your fault. I'm blaming you now. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest complaint about church for most people is that it's full of a bunch of narrow-minded, judgmental hypocrites. Am I right? Is, am I right? And so if you've been hurt in church, if you've been hurt by a Christian and you have a, a disdain for the hype inside the church, can I just speak to you for a moment? I apologize to you. Because we haven't always gotten it right. I haven't always gotten it right. Other people have not always gotten it right, neither have you. Jesus was, he came full of grace and truth. What we wanna do is we wanna nail the truth first without the grace. We want to go straight to truth because what may be truth for me, I need to be extending grace to others. And, and the truth is, no pun intended, is that we've all fallen short and we need to give an allowance for the mess ups of others. We need to give, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the Auburn Tigers. I don't quit being a fan of Auburn because they have a sorry season like they had last year. There's a lot of fair weather fans. Jesus doesn't call us to be a fair weather fan. He calls us to give him full custody, not weekend visitation. Are y'all hearing me? How many hoodats are in the room? Not a great season last year. How much more, how much more the king of glory than the black and gold? How much more? Because listen, we're, there's hundreds of people in this room today. Y'all showed up big today. You're gonna have the opportunity to get hurt and offended. You're gonna have an opportunity to meet a hypocrite while you're here. And from one hypocrite to another, welcome. <laughs> because we're gonna mess up. We're not gonna be perfect. And sincerely, I do apologize because there are some things that have been done in the church. Globally, there has been abuse. 
corruption. Are y'all with me? There's been things that have happened and are still happening. And I believe the spirit of God is revealing a lot of things because he's cleansing his church, especially the leadership. We've gotta have a high standard of those that are teaching and preaching and, and those in leadership of spiritual authority. We have to, we dumbed it down just to download a degree and just say, oh, here's my seminary degree. No, there needs to be time. There needs to be proven. Are y'all with me? Because the truth is, is that the enemy will always find his way to get in to disrupt anything that God's trying to build. Maybe you have heard somebody say one thing but lived another. Some Christians or church leaders, they've abused power. Maybe you run into arrogant, harsh, unkind, unloving, whatever. I'm sorry for that. The reality is, is that we've all been hurt by hypocrites. We really have. In the same way, all of us have been hypocrites too. I'm not perfect. I might say things, get a little upset and frustrated. But most of us, we end up being more focused on being right than being loving. We wanna be right instead of loving. And we need to repent of that. We need to look to Jesus and what he taught and how he lived and how he loved because church has abused power at times. Jesus confronted the leaders who used their power to oppress. Church people snubbed their nose at different people who were nothing like Jesus, but Jesus himself loved the sinner, the tax collector, the prostitute. People accused Christians of being narrow, judgmental. Everywhere Jesus went, he showed compassion for the least. We gotta be honest when we get it wrong. Repent, apologize, forgive others. Because just like you, I'm often a sinner in need. Offer the same grace to others as Jesus has given you. Last point, if you have lost faith in Jesus because of people, maybe your faith is in people. And it should be in Jesus. I want, you, I want you to look at that. If you've lost faith in Jesus because of people, maybe your faith was in the people when it should be in Jesus. And the last point, then I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and close your binders. Jesus has a zero tolerance for hypocrisy, but he has unlimited grace for a sinner in need of forgiveness. He has zero tolerance for hypocrisy. In other words, take off the mask. In other words, quit pretending. Because here's the thing, church, real quick, and we're gonna move into baptisms. His church is not perfect, but he is. And if our focus and our heart and our attention individually, and maybe you're watching on broadcast right now, maybe this is you, if our focus, our heart and our attention is on being the best follower of Christ that I could be and going after the heart of who he is and what he desires, it's gonna be a little more difficult for me to pack my bags and go on a trip when I get offended or hurt or disappointed or frustrated. There's this thing called conversation that the scriptures instruct us to have. What a concept that would be to have conversation. Scripture actually says that if you, if someone has I see Mike and Lisa Ford has been up at the top. If Mike has done something or said something to me and I'm hurt by it, Scripture says I'm to go and have a conversation with Mike, not go talk about Mike to Billy or Nathan or Jeff. No, go have a conversation. You know why? Because that's how resolve's had, is when we have a conversation. And when we don't resolve it that way, then we go with multiple people. It's like, now we got some witnesses. And if you don't resolve it that way, then you go to the church leadership as a whole. And the truth is, guys, is that we gotta get back. In this nation, we gotta get back to our Judeo-Christian values. We're deteriorating left and right quickly. But the church itself is what's dying because we're dying from the truth because we're just not exercising authority. The church is scattered because, Lord help, if we gotta see that person that offended us in 1996. Are y'all with me? Some of you, man, that's, that's, that's crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. And it happens every day. Every single day. If you're looking for, you will find whatever you're looking for. If you're looking to be hurt and offended, you'll find it. But if your focus and attention and heart is on, you know what? Listen, we're gonna do everything we can 
to create an environment and an experience where you can encounter the presence of God. There's gonna be people there. And we're gonna worship together. We're not gonna be perfect, but we know the one who is. And you know what? I'm gonna lift my hands and I'm gonna worship and I'm gonna honor people who are getting saved. People, people are being baptized. Life change is happening. Marriages are being restored. Life change happens. In spite of all of us, the Spirit of God is doing amazing things. So thank you, Collective, for being a part of this faith journey. Let's keep seeking the one true God. Let's keep Jesus the focus. Let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus today, we just thank you. I don't know any other way to say it, but just thank you. Thank you that in spite of who we are and what we've done and how bad we've messed up, you love us anyway. And Lord, I thank you that even as we've discussed this text today and this message today, I pray that instead of looking at others as hypocrites, Lord, I, I pray that we will look in the mirror and evaluate our own heart to make sure that we're not living hypocritical. Because Lord, that is the one thing Jesus, you showed to have zero tolerance with is hypocrisy. Just be real, be you. Don't do things to get attention with other people. Lord, I just pray today that this message will have spoken to the heart of each and every person. With your heads bowed, eyes closed, and just minimize every moving around that you can, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit right now what he may be saying to you from the word today. Just ask him, just say, Lord, what, what, are, you, what are you saying to me? What, what's, what's this for in my heart? How is this pertinent to me? Then I'm gonna ask you to deal with it. What do you mean? If the Holy Spirit points something out, I want you to lay it down, pray, ask for forgiveness, repent. Maybe you're watching on broadcast platforms. Maybe in this moment, maybe you realize that you know you profess being a Christian, but you've never made Christ your Lord and King. You've not repented of your sin. You've just, man, I was born in America. My grandma took me to church. I grew up going to church. That doesn't make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is following Jesus. Have you made the decision to follow Jesus? Have you made the decision to follow him? It's not even a prayer that we pray. We repent, we turn, and we follow him. And our lives will be evidenced by that decision. So maybe that's you today. Maybe you say, you know what, Eric? I'm, I've not made Christ the center of my life. I've, I've been in church, or maybe, you know what? Maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm early and young in the faith, but I'm just a little immature in the faith. That's okay. You're growing. Look at every opportunity as a growing opportunity. But ultimately, the heart is, is that if you don't know Jesus, you're here and you've heard this message because he loves you so much. He brought you here for this time. And I'm not gonna call you to come stand in front of this room with all these people, but I am gonna say, hey, my friend, have you repented and made Jesus the Lord of your life? Have you received the free gift of salvation that only comes from Christ? If not, this is your day. If not, this is your opportunity. With heads bowed, eyes closed, no one moving around, please. If you say, hey, Eric, that's me today. You're talking to me, I, I, I wanna know Christ. Now listen, I'm not gonna call you out. No one's looking but me. But if you'd raise your hand, I wanna pray with you. If you say, hey, Eric, that's me. I wanna know Jesus today. God bless you, God bless you. Anybody else? There's two or three in the room, anyone else? Hey, if that's you, God bless you, I see you. I see you in the back, God bless you. There's three, there's four, God bless you, I see you, ma'am. Yeah, God bless you. There's four, God bless you, ma'am, I see you. There's five, six, God bless you. Anyone else, come on, church. God bless you, man, I see you. Anybody else, nobody looking around, nobody looking around. Let, let's, let's, Popeyes will be there in a minute. There's seven people right now that are saying yes to Jesus. Is there someone else? You say, yeah, I see you in the, at the very top. God bless you guys. I see both of you. Yeah, eight, nine people. God bless you. Somebody else. Yeah, I see you. 10. God bless you. Yeah, 11. God bless you, man. 12. God bless you, buddy. I see you. Everybody pray. There's 12 people right now. There's 12 people. Maybe you're watching on broadcast. Maybe that's you. Is today your day? Is today the day for you to quit playing the game? To take the mask off and to make Jesus the Lord of your life? Quit playing the game and have life change. 
experience the love and the goodness of who he is. Anybody else? Everybody's praying. There's 12. Is there one more? Is there someone else? You say, hey, Eric, that's me. Just, I, I want you to pray with me today. Anybody else? Yeah, God bless you. I see you. 13 people. Let me speak to all the 13 of you. Everyone's head still bowed, eyes closed. Why? Because this is between you and Jesus. 13 people, let me speak directly to you. You are not what people have said you are. You are not even who you may think you are. You are not the mistakes you have made. You are not the issues that you have. Today, with you saying yes to Christ, you're a new creation born again. Today, you take on a new identity. Today, you become a child of God. Today, scripture says, your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. Today, if this was your last day on earth and you stood before Christ, you would hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter. How do you do it? Scripture says in Romans that if you believe in your heart, that Jesus died on a cross, arose from the grave, you are to profess it with your mouth. You're to speak it, you're to declare it. When you do, you will be saved. It's not a one-stop shop, it begins there. Salvation is free, Jesus paid the price, but every day we get to grow. How? We read his word, we get into a small group, get on dream team, come back to gatherings, and we'll be discipled. There's 13 of you today that are stepping across that line and saying yes. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray with you and the whole church together, we're going to pray with you because we don't want you to feel uncomfortable when you pray. You've already raised your hand. You've already made the declaration. Now we're going to speak it just as the word says and everybody around you is going to say it with you. And then what we're going to do, we're going to stand and we're going to celebrate for 13 souls today being born into the kingdom. Then I've got another challenge before we get into water baptisms. I know we've gone long. It's okay. We only have one gathering right now on Sunday. It's okay. Those 13 of you and everybody under the sound of my voice pray this prayer, especially those 13. Say, Father, thank you for loving me so much. You brought me here today. I am sorry that I have sinned. I am sorry for the life I've lived. I am sorry for what I have done. But today, I turn, I repent, I ask you, fill me with your spirit. Jesus, I believe you died on that cross for me. You arose from that grave for me. Life is had through you. Today, I give you everything. I am yours and you are mine. I am born again, I am saved, I am redeemed, I am yours. Devil, get behind me, I am victorious. In Jesus' name I pray, 13 people today, come on somebody.